In the last video, we looked at text classification using spacey word embedding. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of word embeddings in another Python library called Gensim. Now, Gensim is a NLP library similar to spacey, but it is mainly used for topic modeling. Now, we have not covered topic modeling so far. We'll go over that a little later in this playlist. But one thing I want to tell you is when it comes to word vectors, the Gensim API, I find it little more convenient and I will show you just in a minute how that works. Uh, I will give you an overview of Gensim word vectors and in the next video we will do text classification using Gensim word vectors. Here is the website for Gensim. You can install it just by saying pip install Gensim. Okay, so just run that command pip install Gensim and that should install it for you. I have a Jupyter notebook open here and I'm going to import import from Gensim library I will import the appropriate word vectors okay so I will say Gensim don't download API as API and then API dot load now here you can specify which data set or what kind of word embeddings you want to download so one of the word embeddings that is available in Gensim is a model that is trained on Google News. Okay, so Google News is the data set and word to vec is the approach. So you have some models which are using Glow as well. And this is a big model, so it's gonna take some time, 1.6 gigabyte. And while this is loading, let me show you the other models that you have available. So I'm going to put a link of this particular page in the notebook itself. And the one we downloaded is Google uh, word to vec Google News 300. So it is 1.6 gigabyte. You can say, you can see that it is 1.6 gigabyte and it is trained on 100 billion words. So all, possible articles from Google News, they took it, they trained it. And the second column is number of vectors. Yes, so number of vectors is close to 3 million. So it's a huge model. If you're looking for a small model, let's say you are doing some analysis on Twitter. So that those models are relatively light. So 199 megabyte. It will have 1.1 million vectors and it is using a glow technique so glow and word to vec are just two different techniques and then the data set is specified as well in the name so now it downloaded this model and what i can do is directly i can check this similarity so this has a function called similarity where you can specify two words, for example, great and good, right? These are like similar words, see, 0.7. So if it is one, say if it is one, it means they're exactly same, but great, good, let's see, well, okay. Again, these are not synonyms. I have said this in previous videos as well. This similarity is based on the context in which they appear. Uh, so let's take another example. For example, profit and loss. Profit, loss. So they have some similarity, not as much. And let's say profit and gain. Okay. Is sometimes it will give you counterintuitive result, but that's because these two words are appearing in a similar context. If they appear in a similar context, uh, then you will find that their similarity is higher. There is another function called most similar. Okay. So most similar words to lesser good. And you will find, see, great, bad, for example. Now say good and bad, it's a little counterintuitive, right? They are antonyms. But when we say similar, we don't mean the language synonym. Having this understanding is very important. When we say similarity in, the, in terms of word embeddings, 
it is just that these words appear in a similar context. So when they trained this model on Google News article, you know, you Google News is like a huge collection of paragraphs and you could have statements such as I was feeling good as it was a holiday, right? And some other article will have I was feeling bad as it was a Monday. <laughs> Ideally, you shouldn't feel bad on Monday. If you are, then change your job. Okay, but the point I want to convey here is, see, I was feeling as it was, and I was feeling as it was. So good and bad appear in a similar context. You see, the surrounding words are same. So for that reason, the similarity between good and bad is higher. It is 0.7, okay? And we have seen uh, from our word to whack tutorial that this is how we train. We use a semi-supervised learning approach or self-supervised learning approach where we take a huge text corpus. Let's say you have so many articles here and you will generate those samples and train a model. If you want to know more about it, you can just go to YouTube, search for code basics word to vec and that this particular tutorial you should see. Okay, word to vec. I have explained the methodology uh, or the technique behind word to vec. But still, this is pretty powerful, right? Like getting similar words. So now if you train uh, a NLP model using these kind of vectors, and let's say in your training set, you have words like good, and in the production data set, which, which is something you're using for prediction, if you have great, it will still recognize that. This wasn't the case with TF, IDF, and bag of words, etc. because they, they were dumb models. They did not understand the, the semantic similarity between the words. You can try a few other words. Let's say dog. What is similar to dog? See dogs, puppy, golden retriever, then cat. Now see cat and dog. Once again, cat and dog, they appear in a similar context. I love my cat. You could have, you know, in Google News articles on which they, they train this particular model, you would have, I love my dog. You know, similar in the similar context, dog and cat would have appeared. That's why. Now you can do mathematics with this. We we talked about king minus woman plus man is equal to king. Correct. We have a queen. There is another beautiful example, by the way, which is France minus Paris plus Berlin. Any clue what this would be? Well, this would be Germany, right? It's, it's like a country and you're subtracting the capital of it and you're adding another capital, but it is still a country, so it should be Germany. You can do this kind of math very easily in Gensim. In Spacey, it's a little bit inconvenient. That's why I like Gensim. So for, for, for this kind of purpose, so what you can do is, you can use the same API, right? You can say most similar. And here it accepts the this argument called positive. Positive is equal to something and negative is equal to something. Negative is something. So what is negative? Paris. And positive is France and Berlin, right? So I will say France and Berlin plus, right? And this one is minus Paris. And you get Germany, see? This is pretty awesome. Similarly, you can do king minus woman plus man. And you get king, actually I made a mistake. So, okay, so king minus man plus woman, right? So that was a mistake. So king, woman, and this should be man. Say queen. Queen, uh, this is showing in a descending order. The most similar word comes first and second and so on. See, princess is also kind of similar, right? Queen, princess are kind of similar. They have this element of woman. 
you might see crown prince or prince or as well that's okay i mean this is not gonna be see these are not folks these are not magic bullet that it solves all your life issues but they work really well when it comes to your practical problem it has another api called doesn't fit so doesn't match right so if you give set of keywords it will tell you which keyword doesn't match with others for example i can give a bunch of company names and in between i have cat so it will say cat doesn't match because the rest of it it knows so it has a language understanding it knows that these are companies now if i have a bunch of animals let's say dog cat lion and microsoft it will say microsoft is is not a match all right let's download uh, another model so i'm going to use a uh, twitter twitter 25 we we saw here correct so twitter 25 is trained on 2 billion tweets still pretty good 27 megabyte tokens and by the way this is the page for glow glow as a technique it's a technique by stanford that's why stanford.edu you can read more about it on this page but i will just load this model and usually you'll have to wait because they take some time to load and i will maybe do the similar thing so let's say most similar to good now when i say most similar to good it is giving a different result when we were using google news uh word to vec vectors it was showing me great or bad but here good is saying two day this is all based on the twitter uh tweet that they have let's say i do tesla tesla see tesla motors appears after that right uh let's say if i do musk okay it's just giving me some some weird results uh, let me try a different method doesn't match see you, you can do split or you can do whatever the array i mean both are similar and here see breakfast cereal dinner and lunch i can do the something else like let's say this much and here it says the human doesn't match all right so that's all i had for this video i just wanted to give you a very quick overview of word vectors in gensim in the next video we'll be doing a uh, text classification uh using these uh gensim word vectors but you probably are getting an idea that there are trained word vectors available on the internet and different libraries such as spacey gensim pytorch you can load those vectors using these libraries okay and then when you talk about word to vec and glow these are just two these are different techniques or algorithms and when you say things like google news 300 or twitter 25 you're talking about the data sets which they're trained on it's very easy to get confused in nlp because it's a multidisciplinary, vast field with multiple data sets so many libraries so many different techniques hence it's important that you organize those thoughts properly in your brain all right if you like this series folks share it with your friends who can benefit from this i'm spending a lot of effort making these videos so anything you can do to spread the word if you like it if you don't like these videos don't bother okay but if you like it don't just learn and sit on it share it on linkedin because linkedin is a very very uh, useful important platform you can just say okay i'm learning nlp from this playlist so if anyone else wants to learn it just just give a link all right bye